everyone, my name is Keely and I'm the owner and creator here at Soy and Shea and thank you so much for joining me for the first soap making video of 2020. Today's soap has actually been inspired by a comment that was left on my making cookies video that I did for this Santa's eggnog and cookie soap. It was left by buttermilk based soap and she said that she would love to see me make a pavlova soap. Now given that January is all about Australia Day here down under, I figured that I would make a soap that represents that most iconic dessert that we like to eat down here. So let's go and make some mini pavlova soaps. My aim is to create about six of these mini pavlovas. So I've got 600 grams of my oil recipe in here, which you can find down below in the description box. I have my lye water solution here as well, and I have put my titanium dioxide in here already. What I'm going to do as I do whenever I make soaps is I'm going to very carefully pour that lye water down the stick blender to stop any splashback. I'm going to mix it up um, until it comes together and then I'm going to split it out for a little bit of different colour. Now because this soap is all about piping today and I'm pretty sure this fragrance oil is well behaving anyway, I'm going to pour my fragrance in now and I'm using black raspberry vanilla from Aroma. It's got notes of blackberry, raspberry, rose, jasmine, vanilla and musk and it has about 0.2% vanillin in it so that titanium dioxide will really help to stabilise that colour. Loving that creamy white color what I'm going to do is pour myself a little bit of this white off into this jug here I don't need too much that should be about right I'd say just pop that to one side and into this big pot here I'm going to put a little bit of extravagance gold in here now the reason being is because when you make little pavlovas you do actually bake them and the outside gets that slight golden touch to them they might be white on the inside but they'll always have that golden touch on the outside so let's get that mixed in So I've got that mixed in and what I'm going to do now is leave this to sit here just for a little bit until it thickens up and it's ready for piping. So our soap is set up in the biodegradable piping bags with their piping tips and we are ready to start doing this. Now with pavlova you can either have one great big cake or you can have little mini pavlovas. And today I'm going to do little minis and I'm going to use this mold as a guide to how big to make them and also to stop the soap from collapsing in on itself. In this biodegradable piping bag, I have an 8B piping tip, which is a star tip. And I am going to start in the center. I'm going to do a little dollop in the middle here, like so. And then I'm kind of just gonna fill it in going all the way around and up to the top like so and I'm going to do as many as I can out of this piping bag so how was everybody's Christmas break I hope you all did have a good one I had family here from overseas so it was really nice to be able to spend some extra time with them this year we decided because we did have overseas visitors and we didn't want to have to send them back with more than what they came with we decided to do handmade Christmas presents which was a lot of fun trying to come up with things to make for each other and I was really really lucky my dad made me a a new container to put my melts in at markets new display box which will actually cut off about 10 minutes of my setup and pack down time so I'm really really grateful for that but my uncle he made me some um, slab molds so that's a bit exciting I can't wait to actually show you guys those ones I have to plan which soaps I'm going to do in the slab molds right we are almost empty of this piping bag here 
All right, so we're going to just give that a knock down there. The next thing I'm going to do, so that is the outside of our pavlovas. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to add some cream to the top of them because you can't have pavlova without a dollop of cream like so. So I'm just running that around on the top here. Um, the tip I've got in this bag, let's have a look and see, is a 2D tip. And that's to give it a bit of a ruffled shape. of other really lovely gifts I got a handmade shawl which is going to be really nice once it cools back down again that should keep me nice and warm on cold winter market mornings I'm just going to finish squeezing all of this out of here but the other gifts that were made were things like bottles of Baileys I made my mum some new shopping bags um because she always loves the handmade shopping bags rather than carrying around shopping bags that have got other people's labels on them so I made us some of those there's so much you can do and it was just so much fun having all of these handmade gifts that everyone is really going to treasure all right so we've got the base of our pavlovas done so we've got the little meringue bit on the bottom we've got our cream on the top the next thing is to load it up with fruit now that was the other thing that inspired me to actually do this suggestion was because I have got lying around all of these containers of bits and pieces of fruit. So I thought it might be a great way to actually add some of this fruit onto the top of these little pavlova cakes here. So I'm going to do them fairly randomly. We might have a couple that have the raspberries and then the others which will have different fruits. So it might go raspberry and blueberries on this side here all right so who here has actually had pavlova and who likes pavlova if you if you have no idea what it is i will explain that to you now pavlova is basically a little meringue that goes on the bottom and it's baked so the outside becomes quite um, crispy and then inside is really soft and gooey and then you pile it up with lots of cream and cover it in lots of fruit. As I mentioned, you can either have pavlovas as one great big cake or generally you can buy little, um, little um, pavlova pieces like these little cakes and then decorate them with whichever fruits people like. A really good thing is if you're having a dinner party sort of thing, you can have a build your own pavlova thing. So you give everyone the little pavlova nest, they call them, with some cream and then they can put whatever fruits they like onto the top of them and really make them their own. So these ones here, I've got the little blueberries and the raspberries. This side here, I am going to put some kiwi fruit into each of them. And then that's on that piece. We might pop one of these massive strawberries that I've got here. So let's put a piece of pineapple on these ones as well. Now personally, I am not a huge fan of the pavlova. I like the meringue on the bottom if it is nice and crunchy all the way through. And I'm not a huge fan of cream. Apart from the fact that I actually can't really eat cream, when I was allowed to eat dairy products, I still actually didn't like cream and would always pick it off any desserts that I had it on, any cakes and stuff that you got served cream with. I just, I've never been a fan of it. So I like the meringue on the bottom and I love the fruits on the top, especially when you've got them packed with summer berries. So that's my sort of thought on a pavlova. Give me the bottom and give me the top, but you can keep the cream in the middle there. Just on these, I have some little bits of honeycomb that I had left from doing my honeybee soap. So I'm just going to finish popping a few bits of that in with the raspberry blueberry pieces. And then we're going to make up some clear melt and pour. We'll melt down some clear melt and pour and make a little bit of drizzle to go on the top. 
So there is usually two types of drizzle or coolie that they put on the top of the pavlovas. The first one you usually get is a passion fruit coolie. So I have got some clear melt and pour here which I have melted down. I have put a few bits of poppy seed in there just to see if we could pull it through to make it look like the seeds out of the passion fruit. Some of them are actually pulling up that um, poppy seed so that is looking really good. Just giving that a bit of a drizzle over the top. Let's see if we can get some more poppy seeds out and over this one. They are looking really really yummy. Let's get that one done as well. And the other really popular coolie or fruit drizzle to put over the top of the pavlova is a strawberry one. So I have got some red into some clear melt and pour here. And again, just drizzling a little bit of that over the top here. That is looking really, really yummy. Let's get a bit more for on there. As a bit of a final touch, I am going to give them a bit of a spritz with some extravagance mica here just to give them a little bit of shimmer and shine and especially to pick up the sort of lines on the pavlova piece on the bottom. So here are our little mini pavlovas. I'm going to leave them sit here overnight and then we'll be able to come and take them out of the mould and we'll get a better look of them. Okay, so our little pavlovas have been sitting here for a little under 24 hours, probably about 20, and I am going to get them out of the mould, just very gently pushing up, and they should just pop straight out. And there is our first pavlova. I am loving the colour of the base. It looks just like a golden bait pavlova. That bit of cream and the fruit and um, passion fruit coolie on the top for that one. Let's get another one out here. Let's go for our little strawberry kiwi ones. Now I didn't actually put sodium lactate in here but they are popping out very nicely. And there is another one of our little mini pavlovas. I am absolutely loving them and this black raspberry vanilla from Aroma is just so lovely to work with. It is one of the ones that do actually remain strong and true in the soap. Let me see if we can get this one out without ruining the others. Oops, I probably should have done them around the edges of the mould rather than in the middle. But we've got it out. And I am loving them. I think these ones are my favourites. I am going to have to smooth out the bottom of the soap where it has been sitting in the mould. But this one I think is my absolute favourite. Mainly because it's got the raspberry and blueberries on. Two of my favourite berries. Alright, so let's get this final little pavlova out of here. There it is. That is the last one. I hope you have enjoyed watching the first soap making video for 2020. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And until the next video comes out, I hope you have a great one and I'll see you then. Bye. Bye.